A core challenge for firms in any industry is reconciling exploitation and exploration. Exploitation is about efficiency and getting better at what you're doing. Exploration is about novelty and the quest for new products and markets. Exploration and exploitation are very different activities. They rely normally on different organizational structures and respond to very different incentives. It's very hard to reconcile them. Considerable progress has been made in understanding how firms tackle the ambidexterity problem. However, little is known about how individual decision makers solve ambidexterity issues. This paper is a contribution to the behavioral approaches to strategy. We use recent neuroscientific findings to understand what are the microprocesses behind exploration exploitation. There are two key reasons for using a neuroscientific approach. First, because there are robust findings about the micro-level processes behind exploration and exploitation. The second reason is because neuroscientific methods allow us to observe the brain processes as they unfold. Based on uh, neuroscience uh, literature, we developed in this paper uh, three types of hypotheses. The first one connects brain processes to exploitation decisions. The second one connects brain processes to the exploration decision. And the third one connects the choice between exploration and exploitation to the performance of decision-making processes. And to discuss how we implemented the study, we now join our colleague Nicola Canessa in Milan. Functional neuroimaging is based on the use of different techniques to investigate brain activity at rest or during the sensory stimulation, motor activity or cognitive processing. In particular, with the fMRI scanners, we can measure brain activity with a good temporal and spatial resolution. For instance, we can get images of the whole brain with a resolution of a few millimeters every two seconds. Our analysis highlighted the brain regions in which activity is modulated by specific events. In our study, subjects played a gambling task made of 300 trials. In every trial, they chose one among four Zilot machines, and after the spinning, they could observe their game. The payoffs associated with each machine change over time. Those optimal performance requires to balance exploitative choices to gain as much money as possible in any moment and explorative choices to gain new knowledge and update one's own estimates on the value of each machine. Our sample comprises of 63 participants. They were all experienced decision makers with at least four years of experience. We find uh, support for all the three uh, hypotheses um, that we tested. Uh, the exploitation decisions are uh, connected with activation in the uh, reward uh, expectations, the limbic uh, area. Exploration decisions are connected with activation uh, from the locus ceruleus all the way to the uh, uh, prefrontal uh, cortex area. And uh, more importantly, performance of decision-making processes are connected, yes, with activation, with uh, attention control, but also with the uh, uh, switching capacity in the locus ceruleus, which is here in the older uh, part of the brain, the, close to the brain stem. So are these results robust and relevant to strategic management? Uh, to answer these questions, in relative work, we try to do three different things. First, we have manipulated the definition of exploration to increase its uncertainty. Uh, it turns out that the attention control regions are still very important, and we observe an increasing importance of the brain regions related to negative emotions. Secondly, we also deployed more traditional management research techniques, like interviews and verbal protocol analysis, again with very consistent results. Last, relying on the discussion about neuroplasticity, we're exploring whether people can actually improve their decision-making performance uh, in adult life, uh, relying on a variety of teaching methods. And again, the results are, at this stage, quite encouraging. We learned several things with this project. First of all, we learned about the micro foundations behind exploration and exploitation. Second, and very important for us as strategy scholars, we learned that really what goes behind the exploration and exploitation dilemma is not about ambidexterity, understood as concomitantly do, doing the both, but really about knowing when to switch between exploration and exploitation. We are extending this line of work in several ways. First of all, we are interested in understanding more about the role of emotions and time perception behind exploration and exploitation. Second, we are also interested in understanding how managers solve other dilemmas, for example, the socioeconomic dilemma. Finally, something that makes us very curious is to understand what happens when exploration and exploitation is solved at the group level. So for this, we are applying also new network techniques and we are understanding how individuals play exploration and exploitation in teams.
Okay, I'm ready. About the role of high perception. <laughs> I think it's a bit too much, no? That was excessive. <laughs>